Hello, welcome to the lecture series on automobile engineering. In this session, let us talk about fuel supply system. In the previous session, we have discussed about air supply system, then various types of fuels. Now let us discuss about fuel supply system. Then air and fuel, when they come together, how to ignite? I think that you have studied in ignition system. Here basically in the car, you know very well, you have the fuel tank here at the rear end of the car. So from the fuel tank, the fuel flows to the front that enters into the engine cylinder. Let us understand the complete details of the fuel supply system. First, let me discuss about the fuel supply system in SING. You know, the, basically, this is our engine cylinder. You know, during the suction stroke, the piston moves from top dead center towards the bottom dead center. Here, we have the suction valve or the inlet valve. External to this, the air fuel mixture is prepared and during the suction stroke, the air fuel mixture enters into the engine cylinder in an SI engine. So now the question is like, there are various methods, earlier days we were using carburetion system to prepare the air fuel mixture. I think nowadays we have petrol injection system. So let us study both carburetor system as well as the petrol injection system. So here just as shown the A when the throttle is open In the air induction system, once the throttle is open, air enters, air fuel mixture enters, and that gets into the engine cylinder through the inlet valve in a carburetor engine. In a fuel injection system engine, when the throttle is open, through the throttle, the air enters into this air a measured amount of fuel is injected in the inlet manifold and that air fuel mixture is supplied. Let us study the system in detail. Here I have shown a carbureted engine system. Here I have shown a petrol injection system. Just structurally, you have a fuel tank. From the fuel tank, the fuel flows into a fuel pump through a fuel filter. The pump pressurizes this fuel and supplies it to a carburetor. Also, from we have already studied the air induction system. The surrounding air passes through the air filter and enters into the carburetor. Here, the air fuel mixture is prepared. So, carburetor is a device which pre prepares air fuel mixture 
depending on the requirements what are those requirements i'll spell out later depending on the requirements of the engine and then this air fuel mixture passes through this throttle right once the throttle is open and then enters into the engine cylinder during the suction stroke so throttle is just a device which controls the quantity of the gear fuel mixture that is entering into the engine cylinder through the inlet valve so then suction of this charge happens as the piston moves from tdc to bdc then compression then ignition again expansion or power stroke and finally it passes through this so let us focus our study on this system okay in this figure what i have shown is instead of a carburetor we have fuel injection system to supply the fuel here again you can see we are the fuel then we have a fuel pump then gets into the fuel accumulator then that fuel passes through the fuel filter then it enters into see fuel distributor mixture control unit of course there is a pressure regulator to maintain the required pressure the pressure is too high it releases fuel it pressure is less it will see that more fuel enters and see that it maintains the required pressure from here from the distributor there are two passages one for cold start injector and another the fuel flows to the main fuel injector this is the inlet manifold so the fuel flows in this fashion and as we have studied earlier there is an air induction system air flows into the system like this right maybe this way the an axillary unit it's a main when the throttle is open it will directly enter like this so when the throttle is closed it will enter like this and the fuel is injected into it and then the air fuel mixture will be prepared like this once the throttle is open then the air directly enters this way into this air the measured quantity of fuel is injected air fuel mixture is prepared and during the induction stroke the air fuel mixture enters so as i said compression again power and the exhaust right of course we have facilities for warming up now fuel is very cold and all those things to slightly warm up the fuel so all such facilities is also provided to ease the cold starting this is what you can call it as a petrol injection system this is a kind of technology that is being used in cars in vehicles nowadays petrol vehicles and this carburetor technology has become completely obsolete anyway for understanding sake i'll deal about this also i deal in detail about this so as i mentioned what is a carburetor a carburetor is a device which prepares air fuel mixture the required proportion okay the device which prepares this air fuel mixture we call it as a carburetor so as i already mentioned you get the fuel you get the air it prepares the air fuel mixture that device i call it as a carburetor okay now
you must there are many factors affecting the carburation process what are those factors which affect the carburation process the speed of the engine temperature of inlet air volatility of the fuel design of intake manifolds these are some of the things which will affect the carburation process what it means is let us look at a simple example like this <coughs> if the engine is running at say 5000 rpm maybe the time available for carburation process is say this much so what really should happen in a carburation process is suppose you have assumed that this is the carburetor there is air present in this carburetor let us say air present in this into this air let us say i inject fuel this fuel has to get atomized atomized then it should get vaporized and this vaporized fuel has to get mixed with air that's what exactly the process should happen so for these processes it takes time okay so if the engine speed is low more time is available the engine speed is very high less time is available so if the time available is too short then probably vaporization mixing may not be very proper that's one thing second thing is if the temperature of the inlet air is good this inlet air is good then it will help in fast vaporization of the fuel okay if the temperature is too high probably you know that will reduce the induction capacity of the engine that is there okay that's what you call it as the volumetric efficiency it affects so if you buy good volatile fuel vaporization will be good but such fuels will be very expensive and also very carefully we have to design the inlet manifolds so the thing is in a multi cylinder engine if you have a multi cylinder engine correct each there are for each one of the cylinder there is one manifold so if the from a single carburetor this fuel is coming you see here we have to carefully design the distance to be traveled and the shape all these things matter a lot and some of the fuel may get lost some of the fuel may get condensed and it may not supply the right air fuel ratio into the engine cylinder so design of intake manifold matters a lot so you know this very well in the fuel chapter also i explain petrol is approximated by the formula c8h18 you call it as iso octane and this is mixed with air so if i write the chemically correct equation normally the stoichiometric air fuel ratio only considering c8h18 it is something like 14.7 is to 1 but considering other mixtures and other things so it is approximated as 15.12 is to 1 
okay suppose if i considering consider let us say for our understanding sake 15 is to 1 is the stoichiometric air fuel ratio suppose i make it 11 is to 1 then what is going to happen this is chemically correct or stoichiometric air fuel ratio and this is what you can call it as a rich mixture because the quantity of air is less suppose i use something like 18 is to 1 then more air less fuel then you call it as a lean mixture so there is rich mixture there is lean mixture there is stoichiometric air stoichiometric ratio so depending on the conditions conditions we may have to supply the air fuel ratios with different air fuel ratios something like 10 is to 1 say 14.7 is to 1 say 20 is to 1 this is the range in which you can operate this is the leaner side and is the richer side probably if you try to operate the engine on this side it is too rich the fuel may not air fuel mixture you know, may not get ignited so this side also the same problem it is going to be too lean here search for the fuel here search for the air this condition that happens normally in petrol engine this is the kind of air fuel ratio range that we manage so the carburetor has to prepare the air fuel ratio in this range and supply that okay now where exactly we require different air fuel ratios you look at uh, the engine operation one is you have to start the engine starting warming up idling low load running okay then what you can say part load running then you say you are accelerating the vehicle let us say you are running at maximum power condition or maximum fuel economy condition like this so in each one of the cases the air fuel ratio that is required is different so your carburetor should be able to supply that air fuel ratio and supply to the engine during its induction stroke let us say what it means you see here is marked as air fuel ratio this is a richer side okay this is a richer side this is leaner side this is what i said chemically correct say around 14.7 is 2 or approximately you take 15 no problem now this is effective throttle opening i have not opened the throttle at all but still have to supply the air fuel maybe i call it as a idling condition during idling i may not open the throttle at all during idler no load running range it is necessary for us to supply richer mixture you see here around 11 is to 1 that's a kind of richer mixture we are supplying as the throttle is open as the throttle is open you can see that air fuel ratio is coming down 
that means it is becoming leaner and then it will become chemically correct then if I run about throttle opening of say 20% or something like that then it burns in a leaner condition suppose if I fully open the throttle looking for more power and all those things again the air fuel mixture becomes rich <coughs> depending on the throttle condition throttle position it has to prepare the right air fuel ratio and supply that air fuel ratio to the engine cylinder okay let us look into those kind of issues what i am talking about maximum fuel economy all these things are explained i'll explain this why you require that kind of air fuel ratio i'll come back to this this is the construction of a simple carburetor this you can call it as there is a choke valve you can call it as choke tube or venturi tube choke tube or venturi tube you, because you see here you have the venture here right huh? choke tube or venturi tube this as i mentioned a choke valve this we say fuel jet this is the throttle valve and this is what you call it as a float chamber and it is connected to the main fuel tank this outlet of this carburetor is connected to the inlet manifold of the engine cylinder okay right that's how it is correct now sometimes in your language you call it as an accelerate accelerator it's a throttle valve this is the one which you open and close and during starting this is used normally during starting we close this after that once the engine gets started then we open it up it is the one which we will be varying for depending on the requirement our requirement if I are completely close this one like this normally the engine there is no load we are not engaged any gear the engine simply runs we call that condition an idling condition or you can call it as no load condition and you are just open as you open the throttle valve then it accelerates correct then you are just running on a level road let us say you are cruising sometime you want to run it with very high speed or you are taking up a gradient you open the throttle completely you want more power in that case high power so depending on the position of the throttle we say is whether it is starting warming up idling correct low load condition cruising acceleration like this these are all the words we use different conditions you require different air fuel ratios let us say you are starting we call it as cold starting cold starting 
so what happens all these passages are in the cold condition sometimes whatever air and fuel mixture that we supply here the fuel present in the mixture may get condensed in all this okay on the walls get condensed so that what happens then the fuel quantity in the air fuel mixture will reduce it is better we supply richer mixture then part of the fuel even though it gets lost finally the chemically correct air fuel ratio arrives here for that so we need to supply a richer air fuel mixture so once you have closed this position here this valve then we have to see to it small quantity of air enters into that air the fuel say get mixed up and see that the air fuel mixture is richer air fuel mixture is supplied to compensate for these things okay during idling what happens is that you know in the engine cylinder okay this is your inlet valve and this is your exhaust valve there is a clearance volume like this in this clearance volume you have gases <laughs> these are exhaust right burned gases if all the gases will not leave out through the exhaust valve these gases will be there if i don't forcibly force them out then this exhaust gas accumulated when the fresh charge comes here first thing is they get mixed up with the exhaust gases it gets the whole mixture gets diluted so diluted so that the thing is if the fuel quantity is less and there is diluted gases over here correct then oxygen quantity is less so see that we have to see that more fuel atoms coming in contact with the oxygen so that's why it is better to supply richer mixture during it so maintain that richer mixture is supplied so during idling we need richer mixture during starting we require richer mixture now you are just going on a flat road your vehicle is running on a flat road your throttle position is constant so maybe you are maintaining around 30 to 40 percent of your throttle position so then finally you have opened the choke is open throttle is open air is flowing and there is not much of a load on the engine all this then you can simply call it as a cruise condition so in this case the engine has already warmed up a lean mixture will do because you know i told you it's a flat road a lean mixture will do maybe 17 is to 1 or 18 is to 1 like that maybe choke conditions or venturi conditions maybe 11 is to 1 or 12 is to 1 like this which you have seen already from the graph experimented graph suppose all of a sudden i come across an uphill definitely i need more power then what i do is i open the throttle completely in addition to then again i need to supply more fuel so that time probably i have to maintain something like 
say 12 is to 1 or 13 is to 1 kind of a air fuel ratio. So again I require rich mixture. Okay. So this is what this graph indicates. Idling or no load running range because of the dilution you require richer air fuel mixture. During this stage cruising probably linear mixture. During high power range that is you are going uphill or you want to increase the speed of the engine. So then you require that is the thing right. So you have to open the throttle more more than 80 percent then again you require rich mixture. Okay that is what I have said the maximum power. Power versus air fuel ratio when you require maximum power probably you have to run the engine rich. You are running for the maximum efficiency you are running at low air fuel conditions. This is the leaner side this is the richer side. Okay maximum fuel economy that is the throttle between 30 percent to 70 percent kind of thing like that. Okay so I told you about starting idling and lower low road sorry low load running you require richer mixtures. So during acceleration so during cruising all these things I explain this is what exactly this is what is simple this is what exactly a carburetor has to do. Now let me explain a simple carburetor. As I have already mentioned this is what I called it as choke tube or venturi tube. You know what really happens if the air passes like this here it is at a larger area when it passes through this smaller area according to Bernoulli's equation at this point pressure decreases velocity increases if you consider it as condition 1 this is condition 2 P1 by rho 1 plus C1 square by 2 plus Z1 must be equal to P2 by rho 2 C2 square by 2 and Z. This is what we call it as Bernoulli's equation. So this is let us say atmospheric pressure density okay velocity is almost negligible. So Z1 Z2 right potential heads and kind of things like that. So to remain constant in this case what happens here is in this area pressure decreases and velocity increases. So you can see here this float chamber of course this lever the float when it goes down fuel from the main tank will flow into this and fills this. This is open to the atmosphere. So on this atmospheric pressure will be acting. So pressure at this point is atmospheric pressure at this point is lower than the atmosphere because of the pressure difference this fuel is pumped and comes out and it oozes out like this. Suppose air is coming from here this air get mixed up with this and if the throttle is open then the air fuel mixture air and fuel gets mixed up that air fuel mixture will be entering into this engine that's what it happens. 
okay the idea of providing the venturi is this but one day thing is now this is what you can call it as a simple carburetor how it just mixes fuel with air and it supplies but is this capable of supplying varying gear fuel ratio depending on the condition this is not able to supply varying gear fuel ratio depending on the conditions that's why we need to improve this or modify this All these things are explained over here. <coughs> Let us look at this, how we can modify this. Correct. <laughs> See, now let us say you want to one modification here one minute, one minute. okay Now the question is cold start. Cold start. We want rich mixture. So during cold start, you want rich mixture. Suppose if I close this one for a short period if I close this wall which you call it as choke wall suppose we try to just slightly open it up whatever here is there this has to start flowing through this creating a large vacuum here correct and see that the more fuel enters into it but this is not what exactly we do but that is the idea if you close the choke wall you can create more vacuum so that you can see that the more fuel flows into it that's what we can do so that we can create a richer mixture okay next suppose you are idly cold starting you are closing the choke closing the choke during idling you are basically closing the throttle valve closing the throttle valve This one. Suppose if I close this, sorry, here, if I completely close this, right? So now you see here in this region, no vacuum is created. You are blocking the airflow. You have opened this, open, but you are closing, you have blocked this airflow. So no vacuum is created no fear will be flowing into this so now what you can do is you can see that the fuel flows like this get the air and like this <coughs> This is what you can call it as an idling circuit. Okay. 
hanging circuit. So it will not go through the main venturi tube or choke tube. It will just the fuel take this path. Okay, then it mixing happens and it comes out over here. Of course, here also there is a separate path for the closing. I'll explain that. See that the amount of air is less, but the fuel is more. So you are going to get rich mixture here. So that is what I am talking about. Starting choke. Okay. Ides. That's written. Idling system. Idling circuit. Okay. Next. Come here. Acceleration condition. One more power. Choke is open. Throttle is 100% open. Your main jet will give the fuel. But still it is lean. It is not sufficient. Then you operate this pump then it will take the fuel and you know pump it you'll get an additional fuel jet opened up this acceleration this fuel and this fuel mixes with air use a rich air fuel mixture okay so you are using accelerator pump once you release yes it will come back it will not pump the fuel anymore that way you can supply richer mixture suppose you part load running condition I said cruise you want to supply linear air fuel mixture Yeah, you see here the throttle is not completely open, partly it's open. Choke is open now. Now the thing is there is pressure drop, the fuel will be coming out. This quantity of fuel we can reduce by blocking this passage. So you can use a metering device, you can block the passage, if you restrict the quantity of fuel flow will reduce, so that you get a lean mixture. Okay. So that is how you can do it. Another way of doing is compensation light. Suppose I have two jets like this. So first thing is what happens is, when the vacuum is created, fuel will come from this as well as from this. But whatever fuel is there, once it is consumed, then what happens is it will start taking the air instead of fuel. So that initially it will be rich, after that it becomes lean. And it is very restricted orifices there, it will start taking the air. That way you can compensate. It's partly open, economic condition. Or you can have something like axillary air valve means the more vacuum is created, you see that this valve opens and air enters into it. So that you are supplying more air and later mixtures. To this vacuum, once you supply this air, of course, the vacuum gets reduced. Another way of doing is, yes, you are having this air, take out part of the air and turn it this way. So that the vacuum created will be less. So that way we can compensate. Right, now, to this simple carburetor, to this simple carburetor, if I add all this, 
devices then it becomes a practical complete carburetor okay so so then these practical carburetors are constant choke carburetors as i told you like you have the choke tube you have the venturi like this this area is constant choke area is constant but however i can vary this pressure opening the throttle or closing the choke i can vary this pressure another one is constant vacuum carburetor maybe i have this choke area sorry sorry i'll vary this area correct i can vary this area then it become constant vacuum choke area is varied so these are the two types that we have so the su carburetor su carburetor belongs to this category solex carter carburetor they belong to this category then we have up rod down rod side rod you see here air is flowing upwards up rod downwards down rod sideways side, side rod. this how it's classified okay these are popular right compared to up rod now we can really theoretically calculate what should be the air fuel ratio and all this uh, writing down simple bernoulli's equation across this venturi so we can calculate the air fuel ratio so depending upon see fuel nozzle area air area air flow area density of air density of fuel coefficient of discharge for the air side coefficient of discharge for the fuel nozzle consider all these things we can find air fuel ratio so exact air fuel ratio also we can calculate from the pressure drop relationship is a simple thermodynamic relations bernoulli's equation you can work out those things now considering all these things let me explain one practical carburetor that is a solex carburetor as you said you see here this is the choke tube correct right this is the choke tube right fine we have this then you have the venturi side of it correct here you can see that this area is low minimum area condition then you have throttle valve this one okay throttle valve we have of course not shown the choke tube now how exactly it works for different conditions now assume that you have connected this to intake manifold of the engine the throttle is operated choke is operated air flows here the fuel comes out air fuel mixture is prepared 
and it flows into it like this okay now let us look at maybe different color okay that's fine that's fine first let us say how exactly idling works during idling not so, sorry starting starting during starting you close the choke so you can see here through this passage the air enters here okay now actually manually we operate this device starter petrol jet that is choke tube i operate this choke tube so through this passage will air enters then the fuel is connected to the float chamber like this the fuel comes over here and the air fuel mixture is prepared okay oh this this design again you have to study in detail but i'll just talking about the functional side of it air enters this way the fuel enters connected this way air and fuel mixtures are prepared over here and that air fuel mixture you can see here gets into this that's all the thing so it is below the throttle it will just get in this is a rich mixture this will get into the engine cylinder during starting gradually as the engine warms up okay you can pull this valve and you can reduce the quantity of fuel that is entering into this so this we call it as the idling circuit okay and that's how the air and fuel enters over here okay fine sir so let me not get into the uh, you know manufacturing drawing of all these kind of thing and uh, let me focus on the on the functional side of it right that's how it works now let us look at at the time of idling what you do you are closing this valve completely correct completely closing means you are blocking the air flow like this so now what happens you are blocking the air flow So now what happens is idling circuit how exactly it works let me focus on that right you see here this how the air enters the fuel gets in like this the air fuel mixture is prepared then this air fuel mixture will yes enter here. that is what you call it as the idling one now once the throttle is open then this will start flowing through this side it gets out the idling system is now next is compensation economy condition 
You see here you have an emulsion tube. During economy, the petrol gets say emulsified over here. The air is coming from over here. Then the fuel comes out through this and get mixed up with this when it is partly open. Okay, then because of this emulsification tube, it restricts the flow of fuel. So it reduces the quantity of the fuel, right? When it is throttle is completely open, you can see there is an accelerator pump. This pumping the fuel like this. And in addition to this fuel, you get this fuel also. Then you are going to get very very rich the required rich mixture so that's how all these things have this auxiliary units have been added to the simple carburetor to meet the complete running requirements of an a running air fuel requirements of an engine okay so there are many other carburetors which I have given in this uh, PowerPoint you can uh, use them understand I will not be dealing with all of them or you can really study any standard textbooks and learn the idea of not getting into the details of that is nowadays carburetor so are not very useful in automobiles and moreover in future so you can uh, see any good standard book if you are interested in knowing more about the carburetors i mean not so i just given the material you can read through so in future you will have electric cars even the fuel injection system may not be very relevant if if all the cars going to be electrical right anyway so these are there are videos available also the all these things i've added you can also visit the youtube and see the working of various types of carburetors okay so let me deal about something mechanical this is mainly from the academic interest point of view i'm doing it yes this is a mechanical fuel pump for gas yes, engines so you can see here now how exactly a fuel pump works so the question is see here this is engine driven camshaft then about this hinge this will move like this okay because of that this will reciprocate because of this, this diaphragm takes the shape this way or this way like this. So when it takes the shape like this, this volume increases, vacuum is created, this valve is open, then the fuel enters into it, fills into this region, then you press it. Then the pressurized fuel will go like this. Okay. It suck, it gets in, gets pressurized in this region, then flows out. This is how the mechanical pump of an SI engine works. Of course, this you are connected to the fuel tank. Okay. Same way you can think of using a electric fuel pump. You can see here. So 
through this make and break arrangement switching on switching off so that solenoid using the solenoids you can pull up down so then fuel can enter pressurize it then you can send the fuel out okay they're basically using electrical pulses you do this that's why it's electrical fuel pump then fuel filter so you can see it enters like this passes through this fuel filters and then it comes out this way most of the times pleated paper we use and filtering the fuel then you have the fuel tank nowadays most of them are polymer based tanks basically inside the tanks you will have baffles so that when the fuel quantity reduces it should not create lateral accelerations so there's the fuel tank so you can see here there is a fuel outlet which will be connected to the fuel pump then you have the filler pump to know the quantity of the fuel in this you have a fuel gauge as i mentioned ridges for strength baffles for damping of the lateral acceleration okay pass okay then to clean this you have the drain plug these are all the parts of a fuel tank okay <coughs> carburetors basically you know as the emission control norms become very stringent emission control norms become very stringent then people found it the automobile manufacturers found it it is very difficult to continue with the carburetor because the basically what we require is some kind of exact metering device exact metering device understand the engine conditions engine conditions to that condition calculate what should be the exact air fuel ratio and see that that exact air fuel ratio is maintained painting it's a very important thing that way carburetor had many problems non supply of exact air fuel ratio at all loads problem of ice formation at low temperatures distributing of mixture is non uniform to cylinders in case of multi cylinder engine due to resistance of to mixture flow in unequal lengths of intake manifolds economy of fuel is affected during idling and low load running of the engine and moreover something compression ratio using high compression ratio is also an issue which will definitely improve the efficiency of the engine and possibility of backfiring at low speeds particularly in multi cylinder engine these are some of the drawbacks i think to overcome these drawbacks gasoline injection system was invented and now gasoline injection systems are being used in automobiles so let us study injection in petrol engine in the next session now i hope i have made the points clear and uh, hope you have got a clear picture about carburetor and its working thank you very much